Let's take a closer look at the markets. Joining us now is Karen Feinerman, Metropolitan Capital President and a CNBC contributor, most known for her appearances on Fast Money. Yes, right at this Groundbreaking, year, that groundbreaking show at uh, 5 a.m., 5 p.m., right? 5 p.m. Yeah, don't make fun of it, Joe. I'm not. <laughs> anyway, welcome, Karen. It's good to see you 12 nice, hours later, yes, 13 nice hours later. Nice to see you too, Melissa. Um, let's start with Apple. Um, yes. Since we were just talking about the record close here. Right. You, you trimmed recently. Why? I did. I had to. I just, I mean, you know, the whole thing, part of my portfolio, Obviously, it's been a great year, and so it gets big enough that, all right, now I have to, I have to sort of shift a little bit. I, I, as I said when I sold it, I promise you, 100%, it will go higher. Mm -hmm. If for no other reason that I did sell some of it, that seems like a likely catalyst. But, um, I mean, it's still an extraordinary company. I don't know that $3 trillion, I, I don't know that that matters, really. Um, but I, I also feel like it's a little bit expensive. I think I can find some other places to go. Right. But you yeah. mentioned the FANG part of your portfolio really growing. I mean, Meta was part of it. I mean, Meta has been a double so yes. far this year. So why do you choose Apple versus other parts of the versus FANG Versus Meta yeah. or, or Alphabet? Yeah. It's, it's way more expensive. Mm -hmm. um, had to trim some Microsoft, way more expensive. And so it's really uh, driven by that. I think the risk reward, the relative risk reward has changed a little bit for Apple and Microsoft more than for Google and Meta at these prices. But Microsoft yeah. has AI. It does. It has it. AI. It and did. You, you are and a believer I, in I AI. Am I, I am a believer in AI, absolutely. But I am a hun, I'm sort of concerned about, okay, where, how did the money actually get made? And it's, to me, the most clear that the money actually gets made by the picks and shovels of AI. And that, that you have to go to NVIDIA for that. And so even though it's the kind of thing I would look at and normally say, wow, this is really expensive, I don't believe that we have seen what, what this company can really do. We talked about the last quarter, that change in guidance, that revenue gr was extraordinary. And I really believe, and I said it at the time, that they're sandbagging. They're actually going to do more. If you can lift your revenue, you think you have clarity on $11 billion, why would you pick that if you weren't absolutely certain you could do better? Right, and we were talking so, about this last night. If the CFO is saying that the export bans are not really going to impact its business, that tells you that there was some pad embedded in that forecast. I mean, if you, if you take away those orders from China and they're still right. going to hit it. And they're, right. Yeah. They're still they're going to hit it. They'll probably exceed it. I mean, it, it, so, you know, one could argue, all right, people are, you know, getting in front of this and double buying so that they're, they don't have supply issues. But I think we're too early in that. I think that there's still time for a lot of demand. Yeah. So I own a stock that expensive. <laughs> Let's talk about banks because you've been a yes. longtime proponent of banks in general, J.P. Morgan in particular, but you also own others. I do. Yep. Any surprises out of the stress test? No, not really. The only surprise would have been nobody pass or, or somebody, somebody not passing. And um, so we still have some more uncertainty about what regulatory capital requirements will look like. But I feel I like the banks a lot here. I feel like the uncertainty about what the capital requirements are going to be is far more uh, damaging to the stocks than whatever the requirements of the capital are going to be, right? right? People are concerned, all right, well, maybe they'll have to reduce their buybacks. Okay, we've seen them reduce their buybacks a couple times. 2020, we saw them do it. We saw J.P. Morgan reduce their, or stop their buyback after uh, the first quarter of 2022. So what happens, and they just build up more capital, and then they go do buybacks again. And I think the stock at you know, 10 times earnings, a little less than 3% yield, has a lot of uncertainty priced in. So even if there's a 20% increase in the amount of capital they have to keep on their books, that's not going to change your view? Not really. Yeah. No, no. It's just, will they grow there? Does it, are they already there or do they have to grow a little more to get there? They have to earn a little more to get to that capital buffer. Right. City yeah. was deemed as the least sort of resilient in the scenarios. Would you agree? You don't own City. Right now, do you? I, I don't own yeah. City. I do own Bank of America, which mm -hmm. is uh, it's it's not been great. You know, it's uh, I would have thought it had would have done a lot better. J.P. Morgan is really, I think, you know, especially after SVB, especially after the the First Republic, which I think they just played masterfully.